Okay, Phil Collins. I can feel it calling in the air tonight. Like if you're English and you hear the name Phil Collins, you immediately think of a gorilla. Yes. Dairy Cadbury. milk. Cadbury. Cadbury. Did that make it over there as well? Yeah. I was about to say, why gorilla? Yeah, the Cadbury played, Dairy milk. It was over here as well. Oh. And okay. um Was that auto tune, that song? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. Uh-huh. But Sounds so audio. yeah, Phil Collins. Air Tonight, or In the Air Tonight, the song. You posted this. I had a look into it. Kind of interesting. So this song has been a hotly contested song about why it was written. What Wasn't it because of his brother drowned? So this is so interesting. This song, I think it was written in, gosh, the 80s. I think it was in the 80s. I'm not sure. Anyway, this song, people had these myths and and and... and ideas about what it was about and i'm going to tell you some okay so the story goes that phil watched watched this is one of the versions that phil collins watched as a man who once attacked his wife drowned another version was that phil wrote the song about a man who watched another man drown and did nothing to save him even though he was close enough and then he got a private investigator years later to find that man and brought him to his concert and and put the spotlight on him the whole time when whilst he sung this song. Yeah, I heard, I heard that story as well, but it was his brother. Yeah, I heard I it was heard. his brother. And there was yeah. another claim that when Phil was a young boy, he witnessed a man drowning, um, drowning someone else. So he witnessed someone drowning someone, but he was too far away to help. Oh, and that's the one that he got this private detachment. on. But apparently none of these stories are true. <laughs> oh. Did you want it to be true? Well. Yeah, I was thinking it's kind of cool. He's, um, he's sort of... He, uh, I don't um, know. The, the, the story's not cool, die. right? The story's not cool. Yeah, but like, it's cool. He invited him to the concert. He goes, I made a song because of you. <laughs> That's... I didn't even know anything about this, about the whole drowning thing. Yeah, I've never paid enough attention to the lyrics to pick up um, about drown. Like, yeah. There is nothing in the lyrics that say about drowning. It yeah, does like say, Alexander, the, Im- the only image is the gorilla. Behind yeah. The drums. yeah. It's like, I've been waiting my whole life for this, for this moment. Yeah. For all my life. Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> now, he said that <laughs> it was because he wrote, he answered why he wrote the story. Okay. He said it has nothing to do with someone drowning. And it's mainly based on the anger he felt when he was going through a bad divorce with his wife because his wife at the time, Andrea Bertarelli, was cheating on him with their yeah, she, interior decorator. She, ha- she has a, a, a surname that you'd be like, that's a bit of a cheater. Bertarelli. Bertinelli. Bertarelli. Yeah. What? Now- <laughs> Sounds a bit sorry. What? I don't know. What? I don't know. We're going to explore that after this is finished. We're going to explore that. Yep. So they'd been married from 1975 to 1980, she, she she runs off with the interior decorator. It's always the interior decorator. So he was so devastated. No, hold on. It's not usually the interior de- Aren't the interior decorators usually gay? Whoa, it's another conversation. No, like he was have. a painter decorator. I don't think... Oh, the painter. Yeah. yeah. Now, That's different. whilst he was writing it's in the air man. tonight, he just put all <laughs> of his anger into it. But interestingly, he wrote, he wrote this in the moment. He sang the lyrics spontaneously, so he also kind of didn't really know... What it was about, but he was just had a, he just had that angry feeling. He was so annoyed, um, so that's why it has the dark theme to it. But yeah, he was in despair and frustration. Can I? You know that song in the air tonight, right? Mm. Because of that bloody commercial, I thought the drums kicked in freaking early. Right? No, no. Uh, it gets me every single like because I like I hadn't heard the song in a long, long time, and then I, I put it in my favorites. And when I played it, <laughs> this is me. You're like, but th- when is it coming? Well, no, this is not. That's not what I was thinking. I thought it was happening like every time the chorus got <laughs> like so. Every time it starts coming, out, I go. Do, you, do, 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 and I went. You got huh? ready. What the? <laughs> what, you, what just happened? You lifted your drumsticks. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then I go. I don't know how many false starts I had. I had like so many false. And then when it actually happened, I was just you like, missed I it. missed it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm like, what the fuck? This is. <laughs> so I watched a reaction video. It was from um, these two guys who kind of gave it a new resurgence last year because their video went viral. And they two YouTubers, Fred and Tim Williams, and they had been told by their fans, can you do a review on In the Air tonight? So they listened to it and, but they were digging it. They were digging it. But when the drum thing hit, they were like, Whoa. That's what's killing me. That's what's killing me at the moment, right? All these young kids and they watch old videos like when MTV and then they hear old music and then you go, I don't get it. Like, I don't get why, like their reaction is mind blown. And then it brings me back to like when I first, when people first heard that, that, that was their first reaction. Like it was incredible mm. and it still has the same impact. Mm. When people hear it for the first time, like yeah. that drum well, these solo, these guys is were like black rapper type dude guys, but yeah. they they loved it. They like fully appreciated it, and the one guy saved it in his in his um, Spotify I think thing. This is, but yeah, I'd say I really it's a good song. like what what Dev's saying. Like you see that not just with music, but with a lot of things because social media is typically driven by younger people. And watching them come across things that you've grown up with, and it's like the first yeah. time I've ever seen it. It's that's fascinating to me. I find that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you just when like, we say we grew up in a better, like not better, but we just grew up. There was a lot of different cultures. Like we, it was cultured. I don't know. And before us, they we, they grew we, up we in grew a culture. Up with our heads out of our phones. But like when our parents grew up, they they had a lot of good music. That had got a lot of like they had they were going yeah. through a lot of struggles. And because of because life in general, when you have a lot of pain, a lot of good stuff happens afterwards, right? Now, there seems just to be this beige era. Yeah. It's mm. an era of like, beige. Like, uh, like good music is made by pain. Yeah. Like having your heart broken. Yeah. Or living in... Being absolutely sh- shit on and you're like down in the dumps, no way out. That's when you get good music. But you have to go like, through the, that pain, like, right? Like, like the blues. Yeah. You have to experience it. And mm. these guys are so protected in their little bubble, they're not going to experience any pain. That's why all the music today sounds the same. Yeah. Yeah. That's or why... S- yeah, like nothing nothing. that's come out recently will be mind-blowing. No. Wait, can we think of anything mind-blowing in the past, let's say, five years, music-wise? Five years? Which is quite a long time. Well, do- I don't really listen to modern music like that, if I'm honest. Precious? I mean, there's songs that I've liked, but I've not been like precious. Precious. Uh, I, I, I like "Hello" by um Adele. Oh yeah, yeah. That's not five years ago. That was more. That's more. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Okay. I was I was thinking about John John Legend as well, like a lot of their stuff. That's like not that. five. That's, that's more. Are you serious? That's more. Five years ago. The only, thing, the only song I can really think of is "Wap" by Cardi B. <laughs> That's just stupid. <laughs> See, it's but this is this is one of my arguments is to it's me where like So you know like when we grew up we listened to our parents' music, like the things that they yeah. listened to growing up and, and as they, you know, went through life and then we listened to it and we're like, Oh like and then to us they're classics, like, oh that's a classic, you know. But it's because like of what, as you say, like why they're written. Like there's there's things behind why they're written. Whereas yeah. like one story. of my arguments yeah. and people say like Drake is one of the biggest ones. People are like, oh, like when we're when we're you know way older and we got our kids, like Drake will be like our oh, classic that they'll listen to. And I'm like, no, he won't, because to me, <laughs> he writes music for the moment, like to live yeah. for that time. Whatever's hot right now, I'm gonna make music that yeah, fits yeah. that. And that's it, not what I, I that's not where a, classic music comes from. Like, is yeah. it's so it's much like a more microwave than that. artist. <laughs> A microwave artist. I, li- I, 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 I like, like Drake, <laughs> but it's what? not a classic. Yeah, because you know when you get like a microwave pizza? Yeah. Like you feel like a meat lovers, you put it in the microwave, you heat it up and you eat it. Ah. That's Drake. Instant. Yeah. There's no substance to it. There's no, he's it's no an, usher, it's right? He's no for your seven ears. o'clock on the dot, I'm in my drop top. Oh, it kills me. <laughs> Mate, eight, <laughs> eight, eight, yeah, like eight, eight, seven, oh one. Ashley yeah. had eight, a story. Seven, oh one. My first... Album that I got as payment for babysitting. We best. had we had eighty seven and one cassette. <laughs> I think originally. we got it still. Yeah, originally. No, we I had thought it, on it was a CD. But originally yeah. we had that on cassette because we had eighty seven and one. We had <laughs> Will Smith Miami. Mm. 
a yeah. single on cassette. You had a Mariah mm-hmm. Carey. Remember I had that? um. Yeah. I had San- San- Santana. Oh, Santana. Ma- Maria Maria. Oh no, what's the other one? Maria Maria. What's the other one with Santana um, featuring um? The- you know, the Rob guy. Yeah, the Rob guy. Matchbox 20. Matchbox 20. That was a sick one. I love what? that song. What's that one? What's that one? The same idea, emotion that it gets from you. Yeah. You got the kind of love. Oh, <laughs> CJ knows, right? CJ I know knows. which one. I know which one. <laughs> CJ's a performer from way back, mate. It I just, know, smooth, it mate, just brings you back to a certain time. Like, even though we didn't grow up in New York, I remember summertime in Australia listening to that song. Mm. Yeah. Even though we 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 never lived that life, we never had a Cadillac, we had nothing like that. We had a ship box in Australia. It was still summertime. It was still good. Yeah, we, we had a we had a car. If you hit a speed bump, you hit the roof. <laughs> <laughs> or a van that could not open the door from the inside. So the guy from the outside oh, has to yeah, like bang the door to get song. it out. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't my favorite type of music, but I appreciate the song. Um, and. Also, summertime. Do you remember the song "Summertime"? Oh, this summer. is uh, 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 uh. not Wait, that which? one. Oh. Summer, 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 summertime. 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 Oh, what song was I singing? <laughs> Got back in the uh, Do you know the song? Got I sit back yeah, in I think it was by a, pop, a girl pop artist. I can't remember. My pop back then even had soul. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking like Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh man, I've been really oh, crossroads. Yeah. I've been listening to Tupac lately. Have you? Yeah. Did just it, has Emma ever told you about her obsession when she was younger? Her, the boy Tupac? band obsession. Oh. There was a there was oh. a particular there was a particular boy band that Emma was obsessed with. The East. Oh no! Is the one we were thinking of DJ Jazzy? Was it was it Will Smith and Jazzy Jeff? I have the album. It was, wasn't it? Boom, shake, shake, shake the room. But this is like a, a what you call it? Yeah. Like they, they've sampled. Ooh. Do you remember this? Oh, they not. You don't know summer. this? Summer, no. summer. Oh, oh this no, is played in our house growing up a lot. This was a good song. A group. Sla- like Transform. All right, we're going to end the break from the norm. Um, you know, he's the easiest uh, rapper to follow. He's going to be a little bit out of control. Because you can actually hear every word he says. Well, he's, yeah. he to me is like the, the, the amalgamation of probably like 80s rap with yeah. tw- 2000s rap. Because yeah. if you yeah. think like Sugar Hill Gang, like the way they rap, yeah. he's like the modern version of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, what, is it in Family Guy when they do the little skit of Will Smith's rapping? That's absolutely hilarious. I'm and they, it's basically they're just it. making fun of the fact that he's a clean rapper. And the way, yeah, like, right, the way right, you right. just... I'll have to send it to you guys. It's really funny. <laughs>